Okay, my name is Nancy Russell. I have lived in this house for the past 10 years, but I first came here in 1984. I'm from Portland, Oregon. I got divorced. I had no place to go, but I remembered this aunt that I'd only met a few times who owned this house in Moss Landing. She was known as a very giving person. She was a librarian, and she and her husband ran a newspaper in this garage for a long time. Anyhow, there was a woman living in the garage who was schizophrenic and had lived here. She lived here for 22 years. So I knew that my Aunt Dorothy would let me live here. So I came down here and lived with her for a year while I got reorganized and then moved to San Francisco where I got a master's degree and then I worked in nonprofits. Uh, but this was my home base for 20 years while I did a lot of moving around. When I finally decided that I wanted to uh, stop moving, my aunt had died and I had inherited this house. So I moved here in 1984 with the idea that I would become an artist, that I would turn this space into my studio. But I didn't really know what that meant until I ran into a woman that I had known uh, when I lived in Nepal years ago. And she suggested that the only thing I should do is pick up a brush every day. And by picking up a brush every day, I would figure out what to do. So that's what I did. And it led for, to me um, painting uh, on my house, in my house, as well as on canvas. And I had the freedom to do that. Um, there's no HOA in Moss Landing. So I tested it a little bit to see how neighbors would react and people were positive. So I just kept painting. And then I discovered a place called Last Chance Mercantile next to the dump near here. And I started bringing things home that fit in the yard. Uh, all kinds of animals, concrete animals, wooden animals, uh, mannequins, and then also canvases. So I've just kept busy doing that. And that's who I am now. I am an artist. And if you were going to put me in a category, it would probably be decorative or whimsical or whimsical decorative or something like that. Uh, I'm inspired by places that I've lived and traveled to where many of the things that you see, the decoration you see on houses is done by ordinary people. They might be called outsider artists and that they're not trained, but they make their, their courtyards or their houses beautiful because in many cases like in I lived in Nepal for six years and there there are women from a, a tribe called Maitali tribe I don't know if it's a tribe but it, it's a group of people and the women have always had to stay inside their courtyards they couldn't leave so they decorated them, and they painted them, and they inspired me. And then I met other places like that, people who didn't have much access to anything, but they wanted to bring beauty to, to their homes. And I guess uh, that's where a lot of my inspiration comes, as well as from um, artists who would be called real artists. But I, yeah, I really like the the joy and spontaneity that comes from um, people who are not trained. The house, when I moved back here, was painted uh, a kind of a Wedgwood blue with white trim. And the yard was a small patch of grass and in the front, I added a deck to the back of the house. 
but I was reluctant to do anything to it because my aunt had lived here a long time. People were used to it being the way it was. So it was about two years before I decided to, I got the trim painted so that it became beige rather than white and with a slight light orange. And that, was, that seemed bold for me. And I painted the front door um, a gold color. And it just, it started, uh, then I started uh, getting the yard planted with uh, drought resistant plants and gravel and, and bark dust. And then I remember, I can't remember if it was a new year, it was some time, and I kept thinking of that front door. It was just blank. And somehow it looked more blank than it did when it was just a plain old white door. And I, I had some paint, I guess, from painting the interior. And I went outside and painted a lizard on it. And then I just waited to see what neighbors would say. I got a few comments, mostly nothing. So then I continued painting on it. And then after the door was painted, I thought, I just kept going. And I painted uh, designs on the trim. It's, it's different now, but at the time I just uh, started painting designs on the white trim or the beige trim at that time. And then there was a, a secondhand store here and there was a, a, a white egret, a wooden white egret about four feet tall and I brought that home to the yard. And then that was just the beginning. Everything just kept, it took off from there. And I, uh, I was painting furniture at the time uh, because when I came back, I, I started doing that kind of thing, painting furniture, painting boards. I entered a few contests, things like that. And then I just, it just kept going. And it was, it was a very organic process. It wasn't really planned in the beginning. It just happened. Okay, I actually had always painted or drawn. I mostly, as a child, drew pictures and then I painted. I got a lot of attention for painting and being artistic as a child. And then in high school and college, I actually intended to be an art teacher. Um, but at the time I graduated, I couldn't find a job and I moved in a different direction, working in nonprofits and mostly social service or social change kind of nonprofits. But, and I was married. I, I experimented with a lot of different painting, um, even in my early married days. But then as I started ha working more and I started working overseas, I moved to Nepal in 1991, I stopped painting and then it was in the last, I guess, 15 years or 20 years, I did pick it up again, but I didn't really have a style. I just uh, would paint things I see, but it wasn't, I wasn't so interested in the realism. In, in 19, um, well, no, in 2008, I went to Mexico and I spent some time with a woman who painted she had worked on murals. The, her style interested me, and I did a little more of that. Um, my style really is, sometimes I have an image in mind or something that I want to do. I will usually pick up something that I've seen, and I, I like flowers. I like the color. I'm very, obviously, very uh, responsive to color, so I... I like to look at the shapes. I'm more interested in the shapes and the colors. 
I like to do a little fantasy, sometimes putting something that isn't really re there, there, like putting in a dog or a butterfly or something. And it's funny, as a kid, I used to paint kind of sad pictures. And somehow now I'm mostly only interested, especially, I guess, because of the times, uh, I just like to paint happy things and uh, things that I see around me. Uh, and I have sold uh, some paintings. I don't work very hard at it. And I've kind of evolved in time, I guess. Now I usually just, like my friend said, I pick up a brush and I usually start with a black line and uh, start drawing something. And sometimes I paint over a painting so many times that there's so much texture on it um, because of that. So I, when I paint, I usually get, that is actually my meditation. It's the time when I'm really not thinking about anything else. I'm just interested in how I'm going to be able to bring the shape out. I've taken some classes as an adult, but I don't really respond to the traditional methods and I'm not very interested in it. So I just uh, do my own uh, method and I like uh, I like to see what happens after you put the black line. I think that's called that kind of black line methodology is a cloisonne kind of thing where you enclose pe the color within this black line and I like to do that. And it doesn't really have anything to do with anything except that I like to do it and I've seen it done and I Matisse or some other painters use that uh, and I, I just like it. So I, that's what I do. I guess my inspiration from a very early age was the Impressionists mainly. I, I also, uh, my mother took me to the Portland Art Museum where, you know, I saw native, native, uh, art but it was usually in a back room it wasn't very well lit and but that whole kind of primitive thing also I was interested in but most of the time the only kind of inspiration I had was realist because everybody is interested in uh, realism pictures that look like things um, so I think now I'm very interested in uh, uh, like I said, uh, outsider artists. I'm very inspired by outsider artists. Many of them are African American. Many of them are people with a lot of pain in their lives, but I just find their spontaneity and their lack of uh, concern about what other people think very, uh, very interesting and inspiring. I also really like uh, Klimt, Klimt and uh, Lautrec. I like to, I like to decorate, I like everything decorated. I like to decorate my house. I like paintings to be decorated. I like to use gold. Um, so I can't say that there's anything particular, but uh, I he keep a lot of art books around and, and pages turn to things that just uh, inspire me by walking by them. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'm inspired by what I see, wherever it is. When I first started working on the house outside, I did a lot of work in the front in the beginning. And it was fun because when people walk by, they comment. But my main interest was in not offending anyone in the beginning. I didn't really think of it as something that was going to please people. I just wanted to not upset them. And um, it as time went on, I would gather more things. I, I just started, I, I had kids help paint me paint the driveway. I did a lot of things that without consciously thinking that it was going to be an interactive process, but it became interactive. I live on, on a street that isn't well traveled, but so my house was usually, is usually discovered 
by accident. So people get lost. Then they drive up and they look one, at least two or three times, women have gotten out of cars and said, you must not be married because I, the freedom of this house and the way that it's decorated doesn't look like a compromising kind of uh, activity. So other times uh, people just zoom by, other times people slow down. Often people have get out of the car and I will see them from my front window and I come out to talk to them and then they're very excited because I've come out and um, I don't ever think of it as something that only I can do. I mean, I think anybody can do this, but it takes, uh, you have to want to, and if you don't feel it, it's not going to happen. Uh, so I did take two sisters uh, in the probably 50s came by and were really, they, they were just really interested. And so I brought them back to my studio and one of them started crying because she said that it was just full of joy. And I, I am amazed by that, but also I'm pleased by that. These days, one tries to figure out how you fit into all that's going on. There's so many disturbing things going on in the world. I was an activist at one point. Right now, I am not so interesting and interested in joining in. So my contribution is small. It's just uh, making myself happy. And if I can also bring some joy to other people, then I'm happy with that. And that's what I do for a living. <laughs> I guess um, the older one gets, the more conscious one becomes of what you're leaving behind or what kind of legacy or what kind of impact you may have had. I've had a lot of interesting jobs. Most of them involve working with people in, who were in difficult situations. And in many ways, that is a very difficult thing to feel like you really have any kind of impact. And there may be a few people you have touched or had an impact on or been able to make some kind of uh, change. But I think with my painting or my life, I just want people to know that I, that I found something that made me happy. I enjoy it. It is, uh, it is something that I literally, my only mantra is pick up a brush every day. And that is what keeps me going. It's a bit much like writers. I don't have the same discipline with writing. I, I have written. But with, with uh, painting, I can... Sometimes I, I don't really feel like doing anything, but all I have to do is take 20 steps out of the house and come to the garage or to the studio and pick up a brush and usually something will happen. So I, I guess uh, I don't expect, when, when I die, I don't expect anybody to make a museum out of this or try to save it in any way. I, I don't expect that. I don't want it. I think everybody should make their own life. But I do hope that people at least uh, appreciate that there was a person who really found a lot of joy and brought that joy to other people. And that's, that's about it. And I guess I don't, ex I don't, uh, if it inspires others to do something similar or to do, find some way to express themselves in their house where they live, I would be pleased with that. I think one of the things really, something I wasn't even aware of when I started this, the whole, this whole part of my life in the last 10 years has been about, been about repurposing. I repurposed myself and I have repurposed my house and almost everything that is in my house or outside of my house is something that's repurposed. I 
have had the uh, fortune of a, a place nearby that is located next to the landfill that sells things that are too good to go to the landfill um, and often they're very unusual items and for the past probably six or seven years I've made regular trips there so I've furnished my inside of my house with things that I've painted and brought new life to and I that's a very important part in fact all my canvases are canvases that I have gotten there or at Goodwill or someone has given me and uh, almost everything in the studio or in my house is the same thing. So finding new life in things um, that may have been discarded by somebody else is really important. And the house also, this house was always a giving house. It was always my aunt uh, helped other people. The woman Maureen who lived in this garage for 22 years when it really was much less than it is now was an artist who had uh, schizophrenia and she this place inspired her she had a whole garden she made beautiful art here and she died in 1998 my aunt died in 2004 and I'm not sure what my aunt would think of the house as it is now, but I know that Maureen would be really pleased, and my aunt would be more amazed than anything, but that would make me happy, and that's actually one reason I can't leave, because I believe that I'm here for them, and I loved uh, the house that my aunt even considered giving it to me, um, that it is not something I would give up very easily, because it was a gift. And I want to make the best of that gift. I think if people think about how they get to where they are in a particular way of painting, there are a lot of things that uh, guide you. And when you become retired, you're no longer doing the career that you had. Uh, Sometimes it's hard to figure out what to do next, but I feel like inside of me was this need to uh, create freely and that I wasn't really able to do that for a long time. I had the experience of visiting Portland where I'm from and saw the house that my husband and I owned. It's a different, it's painted different colors, but it's still very kind of dull, earth tones and I couldn't respond to that house at all. I, could, I couldn't uh, imagine myself being there um, and that was a good thing and I never would have been painting these colors. The, the bright colors come from my... When I moved to Nepal in 1991 I didn't have a job but my interest was moving to a country figuring out if I could have some kind of impact. I don't really know what the point was, but I wanted to experience what it was like to live in another country. And the first time I saw a Buddhist temple, I was just blown away, having grown up Presbyterian in earth tones and, uh, you know, really very toned down kind of religion and toned down life. I was so blown away by the colors and that uh, was true almost everywhere I lived or traveled, Africa or Asia. People find a way to bring color to their lives. If they live in, uh, in Tibet, where you're surrounded by sand and, um, and not much color, people brought in those colors of the elements, the blue, the yellow, the green, the red, the white, all of that, and it and those colors appear in a lot of other places. I painted my house turquoise and red because those colors actually have meaning in various native cultures. They come from the earth and I really wanted that. I, I wasn't really trying to stand out, although obviously it stands out, but it seems to be the goal in, how, in areas like this, the beach or 
to blend in rather than to stand out, to be part of the earth. I think you can be part of the earth and not have to be in it. So I wanted to stand out. These colors, I respond to these colors and I feel like they're universal in, in many places. And I like that. It makes me feel somehow more connected to some of the places where I've lived. Uh, they had all those places, Nepal or places in Africa, Ethiopia, they all influenced me in different ways. But the lasting, the lasting um, thing for me is the color, the transformation of um, transformation and uh, repurposing the kind of making my life joyful, whether I have a lot of money or not, is something that I really appreciate. So I don't know. I don't know where it all comes from, but certainly the lives that we lead uh, have impact. And we all experience li loss. I had a I had loss. My parents died young. My, you know, I had a divorce. All those things happened. But they aren't the things that come out that I really, or the way they come out is this way for some reason. I have signs in my yard, not normal signs, no signs for sale, no signs, uh, not political signs except. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is there, but basically I have signs because my neighbor boys were reading a book called Wonder, and in it um, the teacher talked about precepts, which are mainly words to live by. So I, they gave me some, some of those come from video games, but then I found others, and um, one day I wrote this sign in my dreams. And I think I was thinking of it as to just that the house and everything in it is part of my own personal dream, not that I dream of it or have any really enlightened feelings uh, through my dreams that resulted in this. But I think um, there's a magical quality about my yard and I think that this is sort of a reminder that in my dreams I never expected to be able to have such a house or to be able to express myself like this. So it's my own personal in my dream statement but I put it in my yard and people can take it whatever way they want. Could be in their dreams. <laughs>